All right, so a couple of days ago, you guys may have seen a video that I made about how to record CSGO, but also the best settings for OBS. Those settings are gonna be awesome for any computer that is very high power. Any computer that is definitely not a budget PC and more of a high-end PC, any computer that can basically push a massive amount of power. Now, a lot of you guys who saw that video said, this video is awesome, but how do we record on a lower end PC? A lot of people have to run budget PCs or maybe even laptops because maybe they just don't have as much money to put into their setup. So today, again, I'm gonna show you guys how you you can record CSGO, but also the best low-end PC settings for OBS. These settings are going to be great for any computer that is definitely on the lower-end spectrum of PCs, and it'll help you record your game still at some decent qualities, but without lag, so you can still play your game also. Also guys, real fast too, only about 2.2% of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel, so if you guys are enjoying these videos, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button, it would mean a lot and really help me out. But with that said, let's get right into the video. Hold up. So moving here to my desktop, you guys can see that I have OBS open and it's actually recording my screen right now. As you can see, my desktop is just being mirrored over and over and over again, and it kind of looks a little funny here. Now, as I said in the last video, the only way you can really record CSGO right now is through display capture. You guys can see my display capture right here. You can basically start recording, open up CSGO, and granted, if it is on the same window, the same monitor, then OBS will record your CSGO without any problems. Now, because of the trusted mode, you cannot record CSGO anymore through the the game capture. You guys can see I have a game capture right here that I actually did use to use for CSGO, but now it's just turned off and disabled because it doesn't work anymore. Thanks CSGO for the new trusted mode update. But anyways, go ahead and use display capture to record CSGO. And with that said, let's now get into the settings. So come over here and click the settings button to open up your settings and it's going to open up this page. Now for the first tab here in general, the only thing we have to worry about is if you want your theme to be dark or light. As you can see, I already have my theme set to dark. I highly recommend using dark. Default is dark. So for some reason, if you really don't like the dark and you want to switch it, that is where you can switch it. But that is the only thing we really need to worry about on the general tab. Now, if we come down to the stream tab, you're going to see that I actually have streaming already set up for YouTube. If you guys have been watching me for a while, or if you're brand new even, I stream on YouTube at least once or twice a week. So this is basically the information I need to give OBS to be able to stream to my YouTube account. If you are streaming on YouTube, go ahead and select YouTube and YouTube Gaming for service server as the primary YouTube ingest server and then your stream key is basically going to be provided right before you go live by YouTube itself. Make sure you guys don't share that with anyone otherwise they can completely take over your stream and compromise your account. If you are streaming on Twitch go ahead and drop down the service drop down here and select Twitch or any of these other services you would like to stream to. Now once you have all that done go ahead and move down to the next tab which is titled output. Output is going to be used for streaming recording audio and replay buffering. Now this tab is mainly just for your streaming and recording settings you don't have to worry about anything else here but the first thing you need to make sure you do make sure this tab up here is switched from simple to advanced by default it's going to be on simple you want it to be on advanced though advanced you're going to be able to change a lot more settings once you have that set to advanced come down here and click streaming set your audio track to one and for your encoder if you have an nvidia card make sure you're using the nvidia new codec this codec is specifically designed for NVIDIA users if you have an NVIDIA card and it requires a lot less power to be able to stream. It'll basically make your computer run a lot easier and utilize your graphics card to be able to stream instead of taking up all of your CPU power. It works really, really well, so if you have this option, make sure you're using it. If you are an AMD user, you should have an option in your encoder section here titled AMD something. I don't have an AMD card, so I do not know what that is called, but if you have that, I would recommend selecting that. Now, if you don't have either of these options showing up, the only thing you can really use is the x264 codec. The x264 codec will unfortunately require a little bit more power from your PC, specifically your CPU, but you can test it out and see if it works. For streaming, make sure your rate control is on CBR and set your bitrate to between 2000 to 4500. If you are streaming off of a low-end PC, chances are it's just not going to work super, super well and smoothly, but if you want to try to do it, your best bet is to going to be streaming at 720p. Now, we'll get more into forcing the 720p settings in a second, but basically a bitrate between 2000 and 4000 is going to be either 720p or 1080p. Most people already don't watch streams in 1080p because their Wi-Fi service or their internet service cannot provide a constant 1080p stream. It takes up a lot of bandwidth and a lot of people's internet provider just cannot offer that. I would recommend starting off with a bitrate of about 2000 and moving your way up from there if your internet and computer can handle it just fine. Make sure your keyframe interval is at 2 and for your preset and profile, you're going to want these to max performance and your profile to high. The preset is mainly very important here because you want more performance over quality. 
This is going to decrease your quality slightly, but if you are running a budget computer, you have to make sure you're putting performance first before everything else. Leave Look Ahead unchecked and check Psycho Visual Tuning. GPU should be at 0 and max B frames, you should set this to 2. Once you have those settings all set, go ahead and come up here to Recording. Now recording is pretty straightforward, it's going to be for recording video, and starting off with these settings, set your type to standard, your recording path is basically going to be where your video exports after you are done recording in OBS. I have a file specifically set for OBS recordings on my second hard drive but you guys can put it wherever you would like. Set your recording format to mp4 and for audio track just select the first one. Again for your encoder if you have the option to use the Nvidia codec use that otherwise use your specific one for your graphics card or x264. It's gonna work exactly the same as I just explained it in the streaming tab. Now this is where the settings get a little bit different. For your control rate you want to set this to VBR. It's gonna be a little bit different than streaming so make sure you guys do set these settings accordingly. Set your rate control to VBR, your first bit rate to 30,000 and your max bit rate to 60,000. This should be able to keep your quality pretty high without requiring a ton of power from your computer, so those settings should work pretty well. If for some reason you are experiencing lag, switch the bitrate tab down to 20,000 or 10,000 and just see how it works. If you notice your recordings in OBS are starting to lag, definitely try turning it down, it should help solve your problem, but do keep in mind your quality will be decreased slightly. For keyframe interval, you're going to leave this at 0, and then for preset again, switch this to max performance and leave your profile at high. Look ahead, leave it unchecked. Psycho visual tuning, you can go ahead and check that. GPU should be set to 0 and max B frame should be set to 2. Now, for audio and replay buffer, we don't really have to worry about too much in these. For audio, you can literally leave this the same, and replay buffer, you can also leave it the same. You don't literally you literally don't have to do anything with them at all. Now, coming down to audio, make sure your sample rate is at 48 hertz. This is going to give you the best audio quality you can get from whatever microphone you're using and make sure your channel is set to stereo. From here in the devices portion of this settings tab, this is where you're going to select your desktop audio and your mic audio. So as you guys can see, any audio that's playing on my desktop is coming through my headset. So I have my Corsair headset selected. And then for my mic, I also have my Corsair Void selected. But if I don't want to use this microphone, then I can also select my AT2020 USB mic, which is what I'm using right now. Once you have your desktop audio and your mic audio set, then that's all you need to worry about in this tab. Next here, we're going to take a look at the video tab. Like I was saying, for streaming and recording, this is what the file format is going to be. Like I said, if you are streaming, I would definitely set both of these to 720p. If you are recording video and you can record at 1080p without a problem, then you can switch it to 1080p whenever you're not streaming, but I would highly recommend for both recording and streaming if you are on a lower end PC to use 720p. It will require a lot less power from your computer and just work a lot better. For your downscale filtering, I would set it to bilinear. Bilinear is going to be the fastest, but if this is really bad and you aren't experiencing any lag, then you can start to bump it up to bicubic or lands cause. For your FPS, I would set this down to 30. 30 is not great for FPS games, it will look a little bit choppy, but if your computer can only run 30, then unfortunately you're going to have to use 30. If you would like to test your computer to see if it does run at 60, I would highly recommend doing that. Your recording will look a lot smoother, but only do this if your computer is okay with it. For hotkeys, hotkeys is pretty straightforward. If you want to set any specific hotkeys, you can do that here. And in advanced, there's really nothing you have to do here. All this should be default. If my settings do not look the same as your settings, then make sure you do switch those settings. It will help make your recording just look a little bit better. But other than that, once you're all done here, go ahead and come down here and click apply and then OK. But anyways, that's pretty much going to wrap up today's video. I hope I was able to help you guys out. And if I did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you are new. And if you do have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them in the comment section below or hit me up on Discord. My server is linked in the description below. And other than that, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.